The Cross Product, Level 3. In this video, we will go over various examples illustrating how to find the cross product of two vectors in space by using both the geometric and component definition of the cross product. Let's jump straight into the first example. Find the magnitude of vector A cross with vector B and determine whether A cross B is directed into the page or out of the page. Here, we're given two vectors that are located on a common plane. We're given the magnitude of both vectors and the angle between them. We can find the magnitude of the cross product by using the geometric definition of the cross product. So we go ahead and substitute the magnitude of the angle between the vectors into the formula. Computing the product of the magnitudes and sine of 60 degrees, we obtain the following. Simplifying the expression, we obtain 25 times the square root of 3 for the magnitude of the cross product. Now, to determine the direction of the cross product, we can go ahead and use the right hand rule. Recall that this vector is going to be perpendicular to vector A and vector B, as well as a common plane containing these two vectors. Using the right hand rule, we place our fingers in a direction of vector A so that our palm faces vector B and curl them towards vector B. In this case, our thumb will be pointing into the page, so we denote this vector with an X. If the vector pointed out of the page, then we denote the vector with a dot. Alright, let's try the next example. Find the magnitude of vector B cross with vector A and determine whether B cross A is directed into the page or out of the page. Similar to the previous example, we are asked to find the magnitude of vector B cross with vector A. We are given the magnitude of each vector and an angle. Notice that this angle is not the angle we usually use for computing the magnitude of the cross product by using the geometric definition since this angle is not between vector B and vector A. We can easily find the angle between the two vectors by shifting vector A so that its tail aligns with the tail of vector B as follows. Then it is just a matter of using geometry to find the angle between vector A and vector B. In this case, it will be equal to 30 degrees. Now we can go ahead and find the magnitude of the cross product by using the geometric definition. Substituting the magnitudes and the angle between the vectors, we obtain the following. Simplifying the expression, we obtain 24 as the magnitude of the cross product. Next, we use the right hand rule to determine the direction of vector B crossed with vector A. So we point our fingers in the direction of vector B with our palms facing vector A and curl them towards vector A. In this case, our thumb will point out of the page, so we use a dot to represent this vector. Alright, let's try the next example. The figure below shows vector V in the xy plane and vector u in the direction of positive k hat. Their lengths are 4 and 5 respectively. Find the magnitude of vector v crossed with vector u and determine whether the components of vector v crossed with vector u are positive, negative, or zero. Alright, here we have a diagram of vector v and vector u. We are first asked to find the magnitude of vector v crossed with vector u. We're given the magnitude of each vector. Note that the angle between the vectors can be obtained from the figure. We know that vector v is located on the xy plane, and vector u has only one component since it is pointing in the positive k hat direction. This means that vector v and vector u are orthogonal to one another. So the angle between these two vectors is 90 degrees, or pi over 2. Next, we go ahead and substitute these values into the geometric definition 
of the cross product. Simplifying the expression, we obtain 20 for the magnitude of vector v crossed with vector u. Next, let's use the right-hand rule to determine the direction of vector v crossed with vector u. We point our fingers in the direction of vector v, with our palms facing vector u, and curl our fingers towards vector u. Once again, our thumb will point in the direction of vector v crossed with vector u. In this case, it will have an x component that is positive, a y component that is negative, and since it lies on the xy plane, it will have a z component that is equal to zero. Let's try the next example. Find the cross product between vector a and vector b, and verify that it is orthogonal to both vector a and vector b. All right, here we're given vector a and vector b in component form. We are asked to find the cross product between these two vectors, specifically vector a crossed with vector b. Let's go ahead and use the component definition of the cross product. We first need to set up our 3x3 three three determinant by using the standard unit vectors as the entries on the first row, followed by the components of vector a in the second row, and the components of vector b in the third row, as follows. Next, we go ahead and compute the determinant by cofactor expansion. So we first cover row 1 and column 1 and use the minor of the 2 by 2 matrix. This value will represent the x or i hat component. Next, we write a negative sign and then cover row 1 and column 2 and use the minor of the 2 by 2 matrix. This value will represent the y or j hat component. And finally, we cover row 1 and column 3. The minor of the 2 by 2 matrix will represent the z or k hat component. Make sure you do not forget the negative sign in the y or j hat component. This is a common mistake that many students make. Next, we go ahead and find the determinants of the 2 by 2 matrices. Then, we simplify each component, obtaining the following components for the cross product. The last thing we need to do is to show that this vector is orthogonal to both vector A and vector B. The easiest way to show this is by taking the dot product of this vector with vector A and vector B. The result should equal zero if the vectors are orthogonal to one another. Computing the dot product with vector a gives us 0 as our answer. In the same manner, computing the dot product with vector b also gives us 0 as our answer. Hence, the vector produced by crossing vector a and vector b is orthogonal to both vector a and vector b. Let's move along to the next example. Find the cross product between vector a and vector b and verify that it is orthogonal to both vector a and vector b. Here, we are given vector a and vector b, written in standard unit vector form. Let's go ahead and rewrite the vectors in component form. Notice that vector b does not have a value for i hat, so the x component will be equal to zero. Next, we go ahead and set up our determinant. The first row will contain the unit standard vectors. The second row will contain the components of vector A. And the third row will contain the components of vector B. Then, we go ahead and find the minors by eliminating the first row in each of the three columns. Doing that, we obtain the following 2x2 two two determinants. Do not forget to include a negative sign in the j-hat component. Finding the determinant of each 2x2 two two matrix and simplifying, we obtain the following vector for the cross product between vector A and vector B. We can verify that this vector is orthogonal to both vector A and vector B by computing the dot product between these vectors. Using the component definition of the dot product, we obtain 0 for both vector A and vector B. 
Hence, vector A cross B is orthogonal to both vector A and vector B. Alright, in our next video, we will go over more challenging examples.